Hey everybody, Dr. Green here. Today I am going to show you how to connect an existing and a new Android project to GitLab. Uh, so you'll see what I have here. Over on the left, I have my uh, GitLab up so that I can create a blank project. I'm going to go ahead and assume you already have an existing GitLab account and know how to set all these things up. On the right, I have Android Studio with a fresh project, just an empty activity project that I am going to connect to GitLab. Note that version control has not yet been set up on this project. So I'm going to go ahead and create a blank project. Uh, we're going to follow their advice here, my awesome Android project. I'm going to go ahead and put this in my own personal namespace and I'm keep it private. Uncheck initialize repository with a readme. Why you may ask? Well, adding that readme into your repository will likely just cause you problems. I'd rather create it myself uh, and go from there. So I'm going to uncheck that and say create project. You see, GitLab does its thing, and one of the things I love is that it gives you these great instructions here. Uh, so there's a global setup to create a new repository, push an existing folder, or push an existing Git repository. The first case we want to look at is pushing an existing folder. So you'll note over here I have an empty Android product, not project, and nothing is set up. I can verify this by saying Git status. Note, I do assume you already have git installed. If you don't, you can go get that installed at git-scm.org. Uh, get that set up and installed. Uh, this should All these commands will work on any terminal. If you're on Windows, you may also want to consider using git bash. So I'm in my projects directory. I have the terminal open. Git tells me this is not a git repository. So I'm already in the folder, but what I want to do is I want to initialize a local git repository. I'm going to use the command git init. We're going to use the option for an initial branch and name that branch main. You can do the same thing by saying enable version control integration and this will walk you through the process as well. I simply find that using the terminal or command line interface is much more convenient, much more uh, expedient, and just works better. It's easier to understand and what is happening is much more clear. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I've created my git repository. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add a new remote. Oops, copied a little too much there, so I'm going to go ahead and clear my terminal using the clear command. Go back and recopy what I wanted. Uh, so the command we're using here is git remote add origin, uh, and then we have the URL of our repo. So the remote is just the remote repository we want to point at. We're going to add a remote. That remote will be named origin and it will point at the address that we've given right here. So you'll see if we type git remote again or we use the more verbose option, we can see the name of that remote as well as where it is pointed to. Okay, this is great. Uh, the next command they give us is git add. So git add, if I add files, we're telling git to start watching files in our project. That dot says add all the local files. Um, and we can go ahead and do this because we already have our .gitignore file in place, which will ignore all the files and directories which we should not have in version control. So I'm going to go ahead and add. It's going to tell me it's going to change some line endings. That's just fine. Now if I look at git status, you'll see I have a whole bunch of new files waiting to be committed. So we go ahead on here, git commit. So we're going to add uh, all of these new files into a commit. Um, typically in class, I demonstrate with the A, which is add and commit. Uh, so, you know, you can do it either way. In this case, because they're already added, we can just use the minus M. If you add the A, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, we're going to give it the message initial commit. And now you'll see they've all been created. I can look at status. I'm on the branch. Nothing to commit. The working tree is clean. The final step is to go ahead and git push. We are going to set the upstream uh, to origin main. So that means what I want to do is match my current branch to the remote named origin in its own branch called main. Uh, that just sets everything up, makes sure it is in sync. So you'll see if I do this, go ahead and I can refresh my page on GitLab and I am left with my project updated. Now every time I change anything, I can go in here, change this to Android. You'll see I have modified files. Okay, so I'll do a git commit minus am. I made some changes. Git push. I'm in business. Those changes were just push. 
pushed. Of course, you can always use the GUI to do all of this, right? Um, you have the version control down here that you can look at. Uh, you have the resource manager, all these things. You have the commit screen that you can look at uh, to handle all these things. I still prefer to do it from the command line. I find it much more efficient, much easier to explain. And all the best folks I've ever seen work with Git do it from the command line and they do it incredibly well. So this is how you add an existing fresh project to GitLab and connect them. Now the other scenario we often run into in this class is when we have an existing uh, code base or repository. So for this example, I'm gonna use this code here, the basic Android Kotlin Compose birthday card app. Uh, this is an example we've used in class and often we'll get these. We wanna use them as starter code. We wanna use them as a baseline for our labs. So let's go in, we're gonna go ahead and grab the address to clone. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal here. You'll see them on my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone that repository locally. Uh, so now I'm getting the code, it's all being copied down to my machine. You'll see I got that all right there, and if I hit LA, LS minus LA, you can see the folder has been created. So now, let me go ahead and open that in Android Studio. We'll go to the desktop, open up the folder. And there we go, it opens up the README directly, I can go into my project view, I can even go ahead and open up my new terminal. And I can show you a few things. First off, we have Git status, so this is clearly a Git repository. I can also look at the remote using the verbose command and you'll see it points directly at GitHub. Uh, so I wanna move this over to GitLab as per our instructions and requirements in class. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project. I'm gonna create a blank project. We're gonna call this My Awesome Android Project 2. I am gonna put it in my own namespace, make it private, and again, uncheck that initialize repository with the readme. Go ahead and create the project. Here is my project, and here's the great thing. GitLab gives us all the instructions on how to do this. So we're not creating a new repo. We're not pushing an existing folder. This time, we're pushing an existing Git repository. Good news is we start in the correct directory. We're already in the directory with our local Git uh, repository. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and rename our remote. So git remote rename origin to old origin. So what I want to do is change the current or origin to a remote named old origin. Okay? This gives me the ability to track history, to look at the old repo, but I'm changing the name to old origin. There we go. That's pointed at GitHub. Next, I want to add origin back in, but I want it to point to my GitLab repository. So you'll see we have git remote add origin. So I'm adding a remote named origin and it's now going to point at my GitLab repo. If I go ahead and look at my remote using verbose, you will see that I now have both remotes there, old origin and origin. Now we wanna set this up so anytime we run a git command, if we are fetching or pulling or pushing, anything that we're doing, we wanna make sure that it goes to GitLab. So the next command, is going to be uh, exactly what they have there in the GitLab repository, git push dash set upstream origin all. Now what this does is it sets up all of our branches, everything, so that they match up with the upstream named origin or with the remote named origin. So I'll go ahead and do that. You'll see it takes care of that and I'm gonna go ahead and do it for tags as well. If there's any tags in our repository, uh, we need to do update those as well. That's just part of the nature of Git. And as you'll see, my project is in place with all the code. Uh, and now as I make changes, I commit, I can push, I can add files, I can do all those things. Everything will go to GitLab. If I happen to want to switch back to one of my other remotes, I can always tell it to push or fetch or commit or do whatever to those other remotes uh, by naming them explicitly on the command line. So I hope this helps and we will see you in class.